Starting in October 2019, Chile experienced some of the largest protests in its history. The protest started over an increase in the metro fare, but in reality, it was more so about 30 years of societal frustration dating all the way back to the Pinochet dictatorship. And, you know, there was a lot going on at that time, too, a lot of socioeconomic barriers to a lot of people. And that all culminated into these very um, loud and sometimes violent protests. And there was a lot of police brutality going on. It really captured the students' imagination, and they realized they were being a witness to history. And so they came to me and they came to my counterparts at UC Berkeley and said, can we do an investigation about this? And we started, you know, on social media, trying to see who was getting hurt or what was going on, how many protesters were getting here was this we had bigger questions like is this systemic is this planned and who's who's doing this so at the human rights investigations lab we are aiming to train the next generation of human rights advocates so a lot of what we do in the human rights investigation lab is open source work um, for our NGO partners. We gather all evidence that is available to anybody. So anyone who just goes on Google and does any search, anything that comes up is publicly available information. We have three reports coming out based on the students' research. One report documents 25 lives lost during the uprisings of fall 2019, early 2020. The second report traces the last week in the life of a very heavily involved social political activist who had quite a bit of online posts that we were able to pull together the last week of his life. And the third report is a joint investigation with UC Berkeley in which we compare and contrast the protest timeline along with the Chilean authority narrative about why those protests were happening. And in doing so, we were able to show the real contention between Chilean authorities and the reasons why people felt they needed to hit, be in the streets. For me, this is really the new terrain for human rights accountability. And so I often talk about the lab and the work that we do as being for the public good. Because as I tell the students, when you can hold someone accountable for human rights violations, that's good for everybody. If we are collectively monitoring and trying to hold governments and institutions accountable for their actions, that ultimately will get us to the end goal of hopefully achieving justice and um, protecting human dignity.